What is up, mi gente? My name is AK. We are here today at LATV Studios with our special guest, LP. You get to see the behind the scenes as we do, you know, we conduct the interviews for a couple of our shows here. So keep it locked because it's going to be fun. <laughs> We're letting people join. And now you wait. <laughs> We need like a loading, like wait, <laughs> waiting See, sign. Could you, could you first? Yeah, let's do it. Come over here. So, loading. <laughs> people are joining. Hi, people. Get super excited. So for the people that are joining, my name is Katie. What's up? Today we have a special interview with LP, a great artist. So this is the behind the scenes. Our social media team out here is gonna, you know, capture all the moments for y'all. Again, this is LA TV. <laughs> show them no, your jacket. No, my hand shaking. Oh, I'll show you guys my this jacket. This is our our our, our uh, stage manager today. You gotta put your hands out. Hell yeah. She came uh, in in style today because uh, you know we have what is a superstar. <laughs> we have a superstar in the house, so uh, Aura had to match wait, that energy. Wait, wait, come back. How would you how would you define this style? Like urban chic, uh, Mexicana. You know what I thought? Uh, the last thing, like the like, lo menos que pensé era que era Mexicana. Really? Yeah. I feel like that's totally yeah, Selena vibes. Right. Oh, he's here now, y'all. <laughs> Would anybody like a water? I'm good. LP, do you want a water? You good? Alright! How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Take a seat right there. Perfect. Please hold phones um, on silent. Phones on silent. Yeah. Phone silent. Everybody interview. I will be standing right here where Aura is at. Okay. And you'll be looking at me. And this is for a show called the Q and Q. Yeah. Queer. Um, and so in this part, we kind of want to get to know you and your story. Um, are you okay with that? Yeah. 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 So yeah, it is a LGBTQ show that we have. Uh, so this is gonna air probably yeah by December. Um, so yeah, we just kind of want to know your the story uh, behind all of the community and all of that, so you just going to uh, just gonna give some questions. If you're comfortable with that, if you're not, that's part of the Yeah, actually, I mean, you know, I know my way around, uh, okay. you know. Okay. <laughs> so, Making so shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a show that is very, yeah. uh, it's for the community, so it's supposed to be, right. and, and, and all that, so yeah, that's it. And it's, it's tar all the shows are for targeting the Latinx community, yes. so you'll be targeting new Latino fans. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. I mean, she already has all of Mexico, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the U.S. based oh, yeah. ones. The yeah, U.S. Like, Latinos. Oh, Mexico tunes in when I LP anything, so I'm like... Awesome. Um, could I see what it's looking like? Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, you want to take a pic? Let's see. Can you film a little bit on the camera and then take yep. it Yeah. Hi. That. Color looks nice. <laughs> tell me, uh, it'll be your introduction, um, so you can say, hello, the Q Agenda, my name is LP, okay. singer-songwriter, okay. and I identify as... <laughs> as what? Whatever you want to identify as. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I mean, 
Hi, thanks for having me, The Q Agenda. My name is LP, I'm a singer, songwriter, and I identify as um, whatever the hell you think I identify as. <laughs> okay, cool, so now <laughs> <laughs> we wanna know a little bit about how you grew up uh, and where you grew up and how that shaped you. Uh, you know, I grew up in New York and it was like, uh, you know, it was before things got really like, you know, I mean, the bulk of like, you know, uh, New York back in the day and the country back in the day felt like it was, uh, you know, people weren't out. That didn't happen until like the 90s, I mean, the 80s and stuff like that. It's like, you know, people didn't really come out and um, in schools and stuff like that. You know, you didn't have seven-year-olds deciding that they, or realizing they were trans and, you know, things like this. So, um, you know, it's a different kind of, um, way that things come into your head, like, you know, I didn't really understand um, what being gay would entail, what it was going to be, um, I didn't even, it really didn't kind of start to crystallize until, like, my late teens and, and kind of go, like, even what that would feel like or look like, so, um, so it's a different way that things come into your consciousness than, than now, where it's, like, everywhere, you know, I mean, I have friends with, uh, you know, 9, 10, 11 year olds that are, like, feeling like, um, you know, um, attention from same-sex friends that, and, and kind of coming home and talking about it, like, civilly with their parents, and it's mind-blowing, you know, when you think about it. It's not, it's not to me now, because it's been a minute that I feel like it's been like that, so, um, but it's very different to come, come into it from, um, you know, when I grew up, where it was not something that was openly discussed, like, outside of the home, inside the home, just wasn't discussed, it was like, you know, you had your your gay uncle or your gay aunt, you know, and they, they looked a certain way. And <laughs> that's, that's your only option. <laughs> you want to look like Aunt Gertrude, then be my guest. Good. You know? And it was like, no, I don't want to look like that. I don't want to be like that. You know, and not that that was bad. Sorry for all the Aunt Gertrudes out there. But I still, like, I think it's so um, diverse and broad now. And you get to see all kinds of people um, being themselves. And... Um, I think that that's just such a, I mean, it's beautiful. And, and I'm, I'm glad that I, you know, it's kind of like being able to say, like, I knew what like life was like before cell phones and after cell phones. I, I know what life was like before being gay was easier and more fun. And, you know, and I'm really happy the way it is now. Um, would you be comfortable sharing your coming out story? Um, I mean, it's, it's simple. I just was like in love with my best friend. It was like, I, I, I you know, I was um, my first songwriting partner and I, and I just couldn't stop thinking about them that way. Even though I wasn't even like, uh, I don't know, it wasn't necessarily that like, um, it wasn't what I thought. Um, it's just like, I just, I fell in love with someone who happened to be of the same sex, you know, which I like that it came to me that way because it wasn't like, I didn't really know that I was like looking at women, um, in a way that was like, oh, I, you know, I think like a lot of people can say this or have this feeling that you think you want to look like somebody because you're having these like thoughts. Um, and then, but my first like fall in love thing, I think would have happened whether that person was, um, you know, a, a male or a female, to be honest, but I don't know, but it was, it was definitely like, I couldn't stop it, you know, I, like um, it wasn't something I could um, just overlook. And so, so that was really, um, uh, kind of eye-opening and, and heart-opening and um, a really cool experience. Um, I think that, uh, you know, it kind of blew my mind, you know, and, um, and I love that. I think that, um, you know, I've met people that have never even been in love, so it was, uh, you know, it was something that was, I'll just always remember that, that wild feeling. Love is love. <laughs> love is love. Word. <laughs> All right. Um, who would you say was your support group? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the community in New York City, you know, the bars, I, I, I worked in lesbian bars, I, I, you know, I hung out and I hung out in them, hung out in um, gay bars, and just, um, I mean, I remember the first time I went to Gay Pride, and I, I couldn't believe my eyes, and, you know, like, my senses, you know, I mean, I remember walking home from it, um, and feeling like, like it was the last day of camp in the summer, you know, and I, I was like, wow, this is, like, so cool, and, you know, it's just so cool to see uh, people, um, you know, like-minded and, and that, like, look like you more or 
felt like you won. It was an incredible experience. But I think like community is always the main the main thing to lean on, in my opinion. You know, because I think that people understand. You know, um, and they're there for you. What has been maybe like the relationship with your identity and your career? Has there been one? <laughs> um, I mean, you know, they are inextricably bound. You know, I mean, of course, you know, but it was. I mean, the two, you know, the two biggest battles of my life were like really like my identity, my sexual identity, my identity as a human, and my career. You know, and and the fact that they had to combine somehow. You know, I mean, I was just at this. Um, this brunch that Adam Lambert had for a bunch of us, like a community kind of really cool thing, a bunch of like artists and writers, and and we and and he was talking about his story, um, you know, like coming up after uh, American Idol and putting out his first record, and that the the cover was too gay for them, you know, and they didn't want the, you know, they're like you know, like straight men are not going to pick this up, and you know, like like stuff like that, and I think, you know, I remember being on the other side of the desk and like people like you know even the thing where they pick up the rock and examine it and put it back down and then like kind of like who's gonna who's gonna like this you know and and you know how is some dude you know like some like middle-aged straight man gonna decide what's gonna like me you know that's hilarious you know it's like it's like hey, guess what I'm gonna fuck you either buddy you know it's like <laughs> no no way like if you put out an album with your stupid little suit on nobody would buy that either so, like, you know, just don't be so fast to judge, you know? And I think um, it was like, it was a lot of that. And just, um, I had to stay true to myself, true to my music, you know? Because that's the biggest thing. I, I think that, like, I've, I've seen it, you know? I've seen, I've been in countries where it's not that, people don't really, you know, they're, they're not trying to, like, build their gay communities, you know? Like, like outside of the gay community, they're not. But there's still, like, like my music comes to my shows, and, and you know, I feel like, I feel like for, for some of those people, I feel like I am that, that um, family member that happens to be gay, that, like, that they still love and like, and can't, and that softens their acceptance, you know, and, like, and, um, and, you know, I always talk about, like, it's, it's kind of like a glacial movement, in a way, like, you know, just by existing, you are, like, furthering the cause. And you can't get, I mean, you can get greedy. People get greedy and they want to, like, they want it now. But I think that ultimately by just being yourself and showing the world that you're not, it's not going to go anywhere. Like, I don't know, like, what people think is going to be, like, some fucking pill. Then I'm like, take this. <laughs> you won't be gay. It's like, ugh. Like, no, you know, it's like, it's beautiful what's happening, you know. And it's because people, you know, like myself, before myself, we're just like, no, I'm not gonna like live in um, bondage for some invisible cause of like, you know, normalcy. Definitely. So to piggyback off of that message, <laughs> what advice do you have for a LGBTQ plus youth? Um, I think you know, like you were saying, like lean on your community and and just know that the people that like you and love you are out there. have to know you and I can tell you that that exists for you and it just means though you know holding fast to like what feels good what feels right what feels natural uh, for you to be and, and just surround yourself with people not people who aren't trying to make you better or try, are like yesing you to death and telling you you know you're perfect everybody needs work we all need work I need work everybody does and I think but I think that by you know having accepting people around you and people that can understand you, they don't have to be even gay, but that like want you to be your best. And, uh, you have to find those people and, and you can feel it. Like allow yourself to feel the energy of a person, like the energetic vibe. You know when you feel good when you don't feel good. So just rely on that more. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, LP. That was it. Right. For that one. We got another one though. We got another one. Yeah, that was perfect. Thank you very so That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Yeah, they're all, it's just, uh, she's going to ask questions and then they'll edit them all no, for I mean, Yeah, I mean, the oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. I thought that was going to be separate. separate. What do you mean separate? I'm not live the whole time. There's just going to be one. Uh, if that's 